Ashley Goodpaster. I teach fourth grade at Garden City Elementary. Today we're doing sediment bottles with Mr. Croslin. Hey, thanks for the introduction. So today we're going to be learning about how do sediment layers form from sediments. And sediments are when there's broken bits of rock. In fact, there's three types of rocks in the world. There's igneous, which means fire formed. We call that magma when it's underground. And it's lava when it's on top of the surface. And it cools into a rock. We have sedimentary rocks, which is what we're going to talk about today. And then there's another type of rock called metamorphic. And metamorphic means changed rock, usually by heat and pressure. But the one we're going to focus on, focus on today are sedimentary rocks because sedimentary rocks are made from sediments and you're going to study four sediments today and we're going to try to make a model of a rock with layers so before we do that we have to talk about erosion you guys heard the word erosion before so erosion is when you take away material or when you um, deposit it somewhere else and what are the three things that cause erosion yes water ice, water, and wind. water ice and wind water like in floods or rivers ice like in mountains and glaciers and wind so these are both all three of these make up erosion let's take a look at what erosion is like on your desk so for example I hate to mess up your desk but if water wind or ice would push everything off your desk And it piles it up there. This has been eroded or taken away, and that has been piled up. And what's another word for that? That has been? Wetering. Nope. Deposited. deposited. That's been deposited. So eroded and deposited. Got it? Got it. The two parts of erosion. So that's erosion. But most kids have a hard time understanding weathering. Weathering is part of erosion, but it's separate. Weathering is when you have like one big rock that gets broken into maybe three rocks, that gets broken into maybe 30 rocks, that gets broken into a thousand small pieces. And what's interesting about this is when the rock is here, it's got sharp edges on it. But as it starts to bang together, those sharp edges get knocked off into smaller sediments. And then they get more knocked off. And usually this is happening in what? In water. When a rock goes down a stream, it tumbles and breaks, and finally, you get some nice round sediments. And you actually have some round sediments on your desk. Let's take a closer look at them. So which one of your sediments is actually small and rounded? What is it? The gravel, check out this gravel. Everybody get some gravel in your hands and take a look at it. It's actually broken rocks that used to be big and sharp, and now how are they? Put them in your hand. Look at the shape. What shape do you see? Smooth. It's smooth. It's in circles. It's. Everybody take a look at some of the gravel. And it is nice and rounded. And that was rounded because of weathering. So let me tell you a real quick little side story. I met an astronaut from Purdue by the name of Gene Cernan. He walked on the moon. And his job was to bring back rocks from the moon during the Apollo space program. Now on the moon, he used a geology's pick and broke off a, a rock and took some of it with him back to Earth and left some of it on the moon. My question is, is there weathering on the moon? What do you think? What do you, no, you don't? No. For weathering, what do we need? What does the Earth have that the moon does not have? What? Yes? Water. Water. There's no water. There's no moving water on the moon. What else? Ice. There's no moving ice. There's no glaciers on the moon. And finally, there is wind. There's no air or wind on the moon. So that rock left on the moon is still sharp, still staying there. If we took that same rock and put it here on the earth, water would move it. Ice would crack it and wind would blow it. That's called weathering. But you know, I could tell you about this, but I have a friend who has a better way to show you about weathering, eroding, and depositing. Check this out. So I've asked Chloe to act out, and we'll join in with you 
three ways to remember weathering, erosion, and deposit. Go ahead, Chloe. What, what do you think? Um, weathering. 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 Everybody do it. Weathering. 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 And that's when rocks get broken down. Do it one more time, Chloe. I love that. Everybody? Weathering, weathering, weathering. Okay, that's how it gets broken up. What's next? Let's get some good dabs in there. One more time. Erosion, erosion, erosion. And freeze on the last one. One, two, three. Erosion. erosion. <laughs> All right. What's the last one then? We have weathering. We have erosion. What's left? Hey, that's great. That's great. So all three of them, show me weathering, erosion, and deposit. Go ahead. Weathering, 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 erosion, 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 deposit, deposit, deposit. I couldn't have done it better myself. Thanks for the help, Chloe. Okay, to do this model of sediment, uh, sediment bottles, you will need a bottle with water in it. Go ahead and draw that. You will need a cup, a funnel, a spoon, and four different sediments. So let's see if you have everything at your table. Do you have the materials? What do you have? Water, water bottle, cup, funnel, spoon, sand, peat moss, gravel, and soil. Okay, I think you guys are ready to get started, aren't you? So we're about ready to get started, but you don't know how much we need to put in of each sediment. So in the gravel, which is first, we're gonna put 40 grams or four spoons, okay? And then next, I'd like you to put the peat moss. And the peat moss, let's just put two spoons or maybe about, uh, I'm gonna say five grams of the sand. Let's put four spoons, 40 grams. And the soil, not very much, not very much soil. Maybe a half a spoon, or I'm thinking about two grams, okay? So you can use your spoon, or you can use your balance scale. Let's get started. One, two, three, four. Come in, you're gonna use your funnel, nice. And look what happened. The, the, the gravel went to the bottom, but what do you see is going on in the water? It's changing colors. It changes colors. You know what that's called that's floating around in there now? It's called silt. S-I-L-T. So go ahead and draw a picture of what yours looks like right now. And you might want to label gravel and some little spots of silt. Put some dots right there. And silt is S-I-L-T. So you, we've been using a spoon for the gravel and the peat moss, but I also have some scales here. Now the way these scales work is we can use a pan, we turn them on, okay? But the problem is when we put the pan on there, it has mass, and so what is that? What's the mass of this pan? 8.2. So if I start putting sand in here, I'm not only weighing the sand, but I'm also weighing the, the, cup. the cup. So what's, here's how we need to do this. Turn it on, put it on, and it's got 8.2. See that red button right there? If you push that red button, that will start it over at zero again. Now it's zero with the pan. Do you guys understand that? So how much sand should we put in? What, what's our agreement? Anybody? Four, four. 40 grams. Go ahead and you start, put a spoon in. Let's see how much 40 grams is. There's one spoon, 15.3. Two spoons, 27.7. Three spoons, 45.5. Take a little bit out. Take a little more out, it's 41.2. Oh, that's too much, 0.6. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 40 grams. 
40.1, I'm gonna take a pinch out. <laughs> Who thought a pinch of salt weighed that much? <laughs> All right, now, this is kind of cool. You've added your gravel, you've added your peat, and if you take a look at that, it's kind of weird. It's like but a chocolate milk. It does, now watch what happens when you put the sand in there. And you go ahead and start pouring your 40 grams in there and let's see we get something amazing should happen without getting sand all over my face <laughs> i'll hold this part and look the sand is coming down nice and i'm starting to see something at the bottom i'm starting to see a layer at the bottom can you see the layer at the bottom all right so the last thing I want you to add is just one half of soil. Let's get your soil. One half spoon of soil. Just a half a spoon of soil. Because the soil is going to really change it. There you go. Put that in. And it kind of is going to make things quite dark. Let's everybody get our four sediments in our sediment bottles. Isn't gravel like sediment? Oh, my God. I have seen. Make sure you do it in order. So, it's kind of stuck here. Let me see. I'm trying to see something. You act like you can't see anything. Right there. There we go. The kids are getting all their sediments in there, um, and now we're going to see what happens when we put a little energy into it. Okay, so now we have our bottles with our four sediments in them, but there's no energy in this. It's just like they're laying on the ground, like on the moon. Nothing's moving them. But on the earth, water is always moving, wind is always blowing, and ice is always pushing. So here's what I want you to do. Start by slowly moving it in a circle on your desk. Go ahead. Now you're putting energy in it. But now there's a lot more rain coming. Now do it quicker and quicker. And now start shaking it up because it's coming out. And now shake it off. Oh, I hope the lids are on these. This is what it sounds like if you're a fish in a flood. Put it back down and circle quick. Circle, 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 circle. On the count of three, stop circling. Freeze. One, two, three. Freeze. Look at them. And that's what happens when it slows down. The layers start to form. Let's take a closer look. So you guys can see the layers on them at the bottom? No. Uh, I see a gravel on the bottom of yours. Friend here turned his upside down, and one layer stayed at the top. Give it a little bit of shaking, you have a landslide. Oh, there was a landslide. You just destroyed half of the world. <laughs> Not really. Start, put it on your on your desk. Slow energy. Circle. Faster energy. Really jumping up and down energy. Shaking energy. And now back to circle, 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 circle. On the count of three, we're going to deposit. Erode one, erode two, and three, deposit. Stop, don't move it. Don't move it. What'd you say? All the, all the sand and all the rocks are going down and it's making more rocks go on top except for it to be the older layer. It's making like a new layer and the sand's turning older. You know, you just gave a lecture on stratigraphy. Old things are at the bottom, new things are on top. And look at your layers. Good job on that. Let me show you what this one looks like. I haven't shaken this one for a day. And if you take a look at it, you can see that the layers are starting to form down here on the bottom. And that's what I want you to see with yours. This is a model of how layers of sedimentary rock are made from sediments that have been eroded, weathered, and deposited. 
So what are those three things again? One more time. You guys show me weathering. Say it. And then you have. And finally you have. Ms. Good Pastor, thanks for letting me take over your class, and I'm going to have to erode out of here. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.